Hello and welcome to the solutions video for the Physics 20 Unit 6 practice test. I apologize in advance to, for the pauses that are going to be coming. I didn't bring the graphing calculator, so I'm going to be doing it in a kind of kludgy spreadsheet off to the side when I'm doing calculations. Okay, beginning our test. So you set up a ramp with a length of 121 centimeters raising one end to a height of 46 centimeters. You then roll a 300 gram toy down the ramp, starting at rest. So the change in potential energy of the toy car rolling down this ramp is just the change in gravi gravitational potential. It is exclusively determined by the height and the mass. The length of 121 centimeters doesn't matter. So this is MGH where g is 9.81, our mass is 300 divided by 1,000, because we have to turn grams into kilograms, and the height, that's our displacement, if it's going from a height of 46 centimeters, the displacement is a negative 0 0.46 meters. So I'll quickly calculate that. I get a negative 1.35, so I'm looking for a negative doesn't let me put in a negative on the practice test through the website. Okay, but this does accept the positive answer. And this is one of the ones that produced an error on the result page in class. I should report this to Jason. So, if all of that energy is changed into kinetic energy, what will be the final what will the final speed of the toy car be? So it does start from rest. So we have this energy that's equal to 1 half mv squared. We could also do this with the vf squared equals vi squared plus 2ad, because we derive that purely with conservation of energy. So either way, the final speed, because the masses cancel, will be the square root 2 times the acceleration times the displacement. So that's 2 times 9.81, or actually a negative 9.81 and a negative 0 0.46. And that works out to 3.0 times 10 to the 0. You now replace the lamp with one length, uh, or with one of length 208 centimeters, still raising one end to the same height. In the absence of friction, it makes no difference. Frictional losses will increase on a longer ramp because there's more distance for that friction to act. But when we're ignoring friction like this, all that matters is the height. So we're good. We've got that same 3.0 times 10 to the 0. Now here, a truck with a mass of 2 times or 2.00 times 10 to the 3 kilograms is driving along a straight level road at 25 meters per second when it runs out of gas. It slows down without braking and comes to rest in 300 meters. The coefficient of friction in this scenario is... Well, the force of friction is what brings this truck to a stop. So, let's actually do a whiteboard for this. Be a little clunky because I'm using the mouse. So the force of friction is our net force. Now the net force is mass times acceleration, and our acceleration is going to be what it takes to go from 25 meters per second to zero in the span of 300 meters. So we can use Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2AD. Our VF is known, our VI is known. So our acceleration is VF squared minus VI squared over 2D. So our mu times the normal force for the friction equals m 
times vf squared minus vi squared over 2d. The m's will cancel. So this is our final expression, where vi is 25 meters per second, vf is 0, g is 9.81, rather a negative 9.81, and d is 300. So to two significant digits, our 0 0.106 rounds to 0 0.11. All right, so now we are dragging a 50 kilogram box across the basement using a rope. We move it 25 meters across the floor. It moves at a constant speed. We've got a force of 236 newtons, while the friction has a magnitude of 205 newtons. The work done by friction will be our 205 newtons times 25 meters, and it's going to oppose our motion. So it's a negative 5.1 kilojoules. That 205 times 25 works out to 5,125. Being in friction is opposing the motion. The work done on the box by the tension force, it starts at rest, it ends at rest, its height hasn't changed. So conservation of energy says there is no net change in energy, they have to add up to zero. So we could have done one and two in either order and just recognize that when they add up, they have to add up to zero. And if you recognize that, well, the only negative numbers are in number one. And number two has these two numbers, which do not appear in number one. So just the fact that they have to cancel out it lets us eliminate two of the options in number two and the two positive options in number one. So you just have to figure out whether we're dealing with 5.1 or 5.9. So now a block of mass 0 0.750 kilograms is towed up an inclined plane tilted at an angle of 25 degrees to the horizontal. The block is moved from point A to point B, a distance of 1.75 meters by a force of 22.5 newtons. The block's change in gravitational potential energy when it arrives at point B is. Well, we've got an angle of 25. This is 1.75 meters. We just have to figure out 1.75 times the sine of 25. Oh, sorry for the pause here. Just have to remember because I'm using a spreadsheet, I have to turn the angles into radians. So we have our height at 0 0.42 meters. And we multiply that by our mass of 0 0.75 and 9.8. 81 meters per second. And if we do this, right, we multiply all this together and we get option A, the 5.44 joules. Now, an express elevator has an average speed of 9.1 meters per second as it rises from the ground floor to the hundredth floor, which is 402 meters above the ground. We've got the total elevator mass and the power supply. And we need to find the power of the lifting motor. Well, power is work over time. The elevator is at a stop at the bottom and at the top. So the kinetic energy is not going to change. It's only the change in potential we have to worry about. So this mass times 9.81 times the 402 meters will give us the work done. And the 402 meters divided by 9.1 meters per second will give us the time elapsed. And the work divided by time will be our power. 
So in fact, algebraically, height cancels. We could even do this as m times g times v in this case. Either way, we get 9.8 times 10 to the 4. So that is 984. Now, after performing a trick above the rim of a skateboard ramp, a 56 kilogram skateboarder lands on the ramp 3.5 meters above ground level with a downward velocity of 4.0 meters per second. Friction in the wheels of the skateboard and air resistance causes a loss of 9.0 times 10 to the 2 joules of mechanical energy. The skateboarder's speed at the bottom of the ramp will be. Now, in this case, we could use our VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. So if we take 4 squared plus 2 times 9.81 times 3.5, and then take the square root, we should get our answer. Okay, I actually missed that part about the loss of 9.0 times 10 to the 2 joules. So doing it the way I described, we would have hit 9.2 meters per second using pure conservation of energy, or just assuming there's no losses to friction, but there are. So in this case, our initial energy is our initial kinetic plus our potential. And our final is 1 half mv squared and the 900 joules that we've lost. So our final velocity will be 2 over m times 1 half m vi squared plus mgh minus the 900 joules and we take the square root of the whole thing. So with that loss of 900 joules, it comes down to 7.2 meters per second. Right here, you're traveling down the road in a car with a total mass, including passengers, of 2.92 times 10 to the 3 kilograms. So what is the change in kinetic energy of the car if you slow down from 90 to 70, but that's kilometers per hour. So we have to convert each of those into meters per second. And then we have to find the kinetic energy at that point, because kinetic energy depends on V squared. It's not linear. So we can't just do 20 squared. So we will need four different numbers here by the time we do 6 and 7. There's 90 to 70 and 20 to 0 will be two different sets, but it's 1 half mvi squared minus 1 half mvf squared. So the first works out to a negative, which is not accepted in the website, a negative 3.6 times 10 to the 5. And then number 7 is a negative 4.5 times 10 to the 4. And when you're slowing down, you're not creating potential energy, you're not creating kinetic energy, it's not chemical, it is lost as heat. So those are frictional losses to the atmosphere. So this is the solution set to our practice test.